So I'm pretty cheap, and as such, I really like older business laptops. They provide good value at prices that will still allow me to blow too much money on the Walmart clearance section. For $50, I got a used ThinkPad A485 featuring a Ryzen 5 2500U with a Vega 8 GPU. Granted, it didn't come with storage or RAM, but for $50, I think we can work with this. So the Ryzen 5 2500U seen in this laptop is a 4-core, 8-threaded Zen-based CPU with a max single-core clock of 3.6GHz, although all-core you'll only see about 3GHz. And for the GPU, we have the mobile version of the Vega 8, which is the same as the desktop GPU, except it only clocks to about 800MHz as opposed to the desktop version's 2GHz. Supporting this APU, I installed 16GB of 24MHz RAM, the fastest speed this APU is rated to run at, and it's in a 2x8 configuration as we have two RAM slots in this laptop. When I opened this laptop for the first time, I saw the 2.5 inch drive caddy, took it out, and discovered the caddy had an adapter for an M.2 SSD. So after rethinking what drive I was going to put in it, I bought a new M.2 SSD and slapped Arch Linux onto it for ideal NeoFetch performance. Now that this thing's guts are reassembled, we can talk about what's going on externally. The screen on this model is a 1080p IPS non-touch panel, and it's fine. Viewing angles are what you'd expect, brightness is somewhere between average and below average, but colors and contrast are good enough for me to watch 40-year-old movies on it with no issues. I will warn you though, there is a 768p option that's TN and supposed to be hot garbage. And given that my old X240 had a similar panel option when I got it, I can attest that it's not good and you do not want that in your life. Oh, and we have a webcam cover for good measure. The best way to describe the keyboard in my opinion is tight and snappy, and it's what I use to write this entire script. The trackpad is fine, I like the buttons, but the trackpad surface isn't great compared to even something like an old unibody MacBook. I do know that you can put the glass trackpad from the X1 Carbon series into this thing's sister laptop, the T480, but I don't know if you can do that same mod for the A485, so if somebody knows, please leave a comment because it's something I might want to try. For portage, this is where we run into one of the sacrifices the A485 had to make compared to the Intel version, the T480. The two USB-C ports found on this device are not Thunderbolt like the one seen on the T480, but it's to be expected when you're using first-gen Ryzen. It really only means that you uh, don't get external GPU support. Also on the left, we have an optional smart card reader for being secure if you're into that. On the right, we have a Kensington lock, full-size SD card reader, gigabit Ethernet, two USB-As with one being a 10 gigabit port, HDMI 2.0, and a 3.5mm audio jack. There's also a light-up dot on the eye on the ThinkPad logo, which as far as I'm concerned is the most important part of any laptop. It just gives off an aura of professionals doing professional things. But who cares about ports if we can't play some games on it? For my test suite, we're going to be playing CS2, GTA 5, and BattleBit Remastered on Arch Linux, because after all, this is Jackson the Nerd, not Jackson the Windows user. And if you're enjoying the nerdiness, consider leaving a like and subscribing to help support future dumb laptop videos. And because I don't have a working capture card for this setup, the gameplay you're seeing is not the benchmark runs the FPS figures were taken from. Starting with GTA 5, using a test course of going from Franklin's house to Chumash at 1080p normal settings with the DirectX 11 API, we see averages of 34.7, 1% lows of 28.4, and 0.1% lows of 24.5, which given that the laptop costs less than the game did at launch, we're not doing too bad. We're actually seeing performance that is more stable than something like an Xbox 360, but instead at a resolution of full 1080p. I'll also note that the average does drop down a little if you move to online, but I managed to get a locked 40 FPS at 720p in online. Because modern Battlefield games are not good, and I'm too cheap to shell out for Battlefield 2042, we'll be testing Battlebit Remastered. And utilizing the low settings, which is the second to lowest preset, at 1080p resolution, we saw a 43.8 average, 1% lows of 32.4, and 0.1% lows of 31.4 by testing across three different 127v127 player maps. Maps with vegetation will result in lower FPS, but you can always drop resolution or drop to potato settings if you want to smooth things out. CSGO would have run on this laptop with no issues, but we don't have CSGO anymore, so we have to deal with a far more intensive CS2. And playing a Dust2 deathmatch, which is more intensive than a normal competitive match, at 720p lowest settings with FSR performance, we see an average of 45.6 FPS with 1% lows of 24.3 and 0.1% lows of 18.1. So you're not going to get Global Elite 2 on this, so don't sell it your life. But I did manage to get some op kills on a trackpad, making this good enough for my purposes. But gaming is only a part of what people do on their serious business machines, so what's it like to use an A485 as a daily driver? Well put simply, it's good enough to never get in your way. 
This computer has the raw performance to make daily tasks snappy, and the relatively strong GPU means that video content like 4K YouTube is no issue as well. I've written the entire script for this video with the laptop while watching movies and YouTube and there was never a slowdown. And due to this laptop sharing its DNA with the T480, we have the same use of the power bridge technology. This means that we have an external battery being 24, 48, or 72 watt hours, and an internal 24 watt hour battery. In this A485's case, we have the 72 watt hour external battery that gives the laptop a bit of a tilt. But capacity doesn't mean much if you're using a gaming laptop that's super power hungry. But lucky for us, we have a 15 watt APU, meaning our battery life is very good. Under mile usage, watching some 1080p YouTube, writing documents in Google Docs, reading through articles on news websites, you'll see about 6 to 8 hours of battery life. However, if you're playing GTA 5 on battery, you're going to see more like 2 to 3 hours of battery life, and the only time you're going to hear the fan on this machine is while you're gaming, and even then it's still quieter than something like a newer Intel based MacBook. So go and buy the ThinkPad A485, it provides a good value, especially if you value good GPU performance. Although if you want raw CPU performance, the T480 is still a great option. You can upgrade almost everything in this laptop, it has all the ports you could want, and the logo shows people you mean business. Just please get a 1080p screen. And that concludes the first video on this channel. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like and subscribing as random tech videos are what I do here, and the interaction helps more people find the channel. Also, if you have any tests for future devices you'd like to see, or any videos you'd like for me to make, leave a comment and let me know. So thank you all very much for watching, I'm Jackson the Nerd, and I'll see you next week.